thank you so much for that introduction in my presentation as what my Dr. Ponce has already um, emphasized that uh, my presentation about macroplastic load in mangrove areas in Cebu. Um, why plastics? Actually, plastic is um, usually it's a fossil based uh, material that is ubiquitous in our society. And in fact, according to Reed, today's society's reliance on plastic is referred to as the plasticine. We see plastics everywhere. So from packaging, even um, with the onset of the health crisis that we are into, there is also the increase of plastic waste from the medical sector. And of course, it is present in our building construction, in our household supplies. Um, so without question, plastic is a very useful material. But the issue often associated with plastics is its disposal majority of which usually ends up in the marine environment and eventually in the marine environment because only a very few portion of that is in fact recycled. Um, in terms of studies, sadly, according to Jean Beck et al., there is around eight metric tons of plastic waste that ends up in the marine environment um, annually. And in this report, the Philippines ranks third. On a separate study conducted by Mayher, um, um, accounting for plastic through river systems, and then again, in this particular study, the Philippines is among the top producers of plastic waste. Another input is coming from fisheries or from sea. So these are usually from fishing gears, and that would account for around 0.6 uh, metric tons annually. Okay, so there are already, there are a lot of studies conducted of um, plastics in the environment. Although apparently most of these studies are skewed towards the seafloor, the open ocean, the beaches, and of course, there are also other studies accounting for its impact on organisms, but very few studies do account for its presence in the mangrove ecosystem, which in fact, because of the structure of the mangrove ecosystems, it would have the inherent potential to trap plastic waste. Um, specifically in the Philippines, um, there is only one study that has been published so far when it comes to plastic occurrence in the mangrove ecosystems. Thus, it is the focus for our study. So another is that the Philippines, according to Galarpi et al., we do have a disconnect when it comes to research on plastic and at the same time policy implications. And thus, it is the motivation of this study that, of course, we have to associate our findings with its policy implications. So specifically, what we did is that we um, characterized plastic litter in terms of load, type, and size in mangrove ecosystems. So how we did it? These are um, the sites. So Cebu, I think you're familiar with the island of Cebu. We are a very uh, long, um, narrow island. So we have mangroves all over the island, all directions of the island. So we sampled at uh, 14 locations or municipalities with mangroves. And then particularly Cebu is a special case because we are a very dense island and population is one of the attributes often associated with plastic waste. And it is without a doubt based on the Penro report that yes, we do have a plastic problem. So how we did it is that um, we established transects in each of the municipality. Some municipalities we establish only three transects, while some municipalities we establish nine or six transects, depending in fact on the length of the coastline covered by the mangroves. So in the transect, we establish a landward quadrat, middle and a seaward quadrat, and then in each 10 by 10, we had to collect all the plastic within the quadrat, brought it to the laboratory, and we dried it and characterized it according to the UN litter classification code. So, and we also size it. 
Now, as for the results, um, we were able to establish 220 plots for the whole island of Cebu, and that would cover around 18,978 square meters. We were able to collect a total of 4,501 items, and this would mean that we have around 1.29 um, items of pieces of plastics per meter squared. And that is equivalent to around 18 grams of plastics per meter square. Um, so although it can actually vary, so it would also some areas also have around 700, the highest is actually around 706 grams per meter square. That's almost a kilo in just one meter squared of plastic. But if we extrapolate that to the total mangrove cover of Cebu, that would around be 245 to 791 tons of plastic in just in the mangrove ecosystem of Cebu Island. And I hope you could imagine how many trucks 791 tons is. But if we also have to divide it with our population, that's just going to end up with 102 grams per Cebuano. So that's actually small. So if we associate that with our population. But generally, our findings would show that yes, the 129 pieces per meter squared is comparable with other studies or such as India and Indonesia, but it is in fact high as compared to other um, studies, which are like, for example, in the Caribbean or in the Middle East. So what could be the factors that would associate for this increase. One, of course, is the mangrove structure because studies would show that the more dense the mangrove is, the more likely that it will be able to trap plastics. And of course, the root structure, the species of the mangroves found in the area because um, if it has pneumatophores and if it has um, crop roots, it would most likely trap um, plastics as well. But what we found out is that most urban centers, such as Consolacion, Mandawe, Bugo, are in fact, or they do have high plastic load in their mangrove sites. So we associate that this, of course, urban is associated with um, economic activity and population. So we would uh, infer that plastic generation is associated with urbanization and the characteristics associated with urbanization. But what we notice that there is also a difference in the count and mass, and that it does not, not always mean that if it has the highest count, it has always the highest mass, such as in the case of Karkar and Bugo here. Because what we notice is that if the plastics disintegrate, then eventually we would have to count them as several plastics, so that's more count. But when you weigh them together, although because they're small, then they would still mean that they have less weight. So in this effect, we would always, or we would suggest that in studying plastics, there should always be the accounting for two types of plastic currency or the reporting of these two types of plastic currency, which is count and mass. Now, what about the type of plastics that we found in the area? First is that large or a huge proportion of the, pla uh, the plastic type that we found in the mangroves are in fact packaging. This is indeed reflective of our sachet economy. A large proportion of this um, is a sachet. And of course, we know that um, private companies usually use sachet as also as a ma marketing strategy because they have to sell or they have to introduce a product in such a way that it is affordable or within the coinage system of the market so that it will be able to penetrate the market. So this scenario really shows that companies are in fact can be game changers on how they would be able to strategize this approach in such a way that they would be able to reduce plastic. Um, they may engage into uh, product substitution perhaps or down gauging or they will have to implement the extended producer responsibility but nonetheless it is a call for companies that they have to essentially reduce their plastic footprint which is also another is plastic bags um the plastic bags that we refer to here are the, the one we locally refer to as labo or the cellophane 
So indeed, um, Asians or Filipinos, we have this high reliance to plastic bags, and most often they are not um, recycled. And of course, because packaging and plastic, they may eventually disintegrate and then become smaller plastics, hence a majority is also the plastic fragment. These are usually materials that we could no longer associate what they originally made of because they have been broken down into small pieces. Another is we have clothing, socks, and PE bottles. These materials supposedly have the potential to be recycled, especially PET bottles that is in fact bought by junk shops at a specific price. But the fact that they are still abundant in the marine environment indicates that the economic incentive associated with selling PET bottles in junk shop may not actually be um, inviting. So I think we have to look into this. And another also, we have to increase the recycling potential of these materials because it is shown that there is already a technology for the recycling, but one is that we have difficulty in recovery so I think we have to improve in the recovery process. And of course, we have to encourage um, stakeholders to recycle these materials. Studies would show that um, stakeholders who are in fact educated, who are in fact engaged, um, they have socioeconomic engagements, they have higher propensity to do recycling. So we have to capture or we have to um, address this concern as well. And of course, we have sanitary materials. These are made of diapers and napkins. Um, usually, these are really considered, and in typical process is that in our process is that we dispose this and put this in our landfills. But we have to consider also that other countries has already ventured in converting this into a source of um, into a source of energy source. So, for example. Uh, it is converted into or it undergoes um, pyrolysis so that it will be converted as a source of energy. Another is that um, these uh, products, they do have three patterns, packaging, last, uh, packaging, and of course your plastic fragments. These are usually highest in the landward side and they eventually we decrease in number in the seaward side. Other products are equally distributed from landward, middle, and then seaward. And then what you have noticed is that we have noticed is that fishing-related items are in fact highest in the seaward side. So what does this pattern suggest? Well, of course, they would show that there is in fact transport of plastic within the mangrove ecosystem and that packaging and then also the plastic fragments may potentially originate from the landward side and then fishing related items for instance can only be potentially coming from the seaward or because we have what you call as ghost nets in um, once this material or nets or fishing related items are no longer um, usable or no longer provide um, the purpose then they, they're just disposed into the sea so we have to address this. Our commitment to the international marine pollution should also be um, addressed, or we have to look into that because supposedly we have we should not dispose these items into the sea. But overall, our study would show that yes, indeed, plastic flux is coming from land to the sea, and the other one, um, sea to um, the landward side. Um, one, it is affected by the size of the plastics, plastics with larger surface area, and they have um, can be air filled, they tend to be buoyant, and therefore they can be transported across the, man uh, the mangrove breath. And then, of course, biofouling, which may eventually affect also their or reduce their uh, or increase their rate of sinking. So they will become heavier if there is biofouling. So what are the implications of our study? First of all, we know that we have to do a uh, mangrove um, reforestation projects, but we encourage that if we do mangrove reforestations, we go to the field and we do plant um, mangroves. But when going back, we suggest that instead of just leaving our plastic bags 
where we put our seedlings sometimes into the mangrove area, but we have to bring it back. And along with that, we also have to pick, pick plastic items along the way before um, in going home. But more importantly, the implications for this study is towards the solid waste management. So clearly we have to improve and look into our solid waste management program. We have to um, check from you know, the whole process of the waste stream. But what is very clear is that the government has a role in terms of the implementation, in terms of the enforcement. The private sector has to engage on how to reduce their plastic footprint, but also stakeholders has to engage how we can reduce or improve or reduce littering, improve our recovery rate, and at the same time, improve our recycling um, tendency because it is clear that littering is common also in Cebu and the rest of the region. So in conclusion, we say that plastic waste is improperly disposed both in land and sea. And then sadly, the mangrove ecosystem serves as a dump site in this improperly disposed waste. Um, as you see, um, population, and then, of course, our high plastic consumption, such as our plastic preference, for example, our sachet, and then also the poor waste management, especially in urban centers, um, attributes, in fact, to the voluminous waste in this mangrove. And obviously, it's not just government, but also a private and public partnership has to be implemented. Um, we have to uh, employ, we have to educate, we have to engage the community, and obviously we need the infrastructure and the technological solutions, and of course the policy so that we can improve our plastic waste management. Thank you very much. So this study is in fact uh, funded by the U UK National Environmental Research Council in partnership with um, University of Bangor and I am from the University of San Carlos. Thank you very much.